In Trogdor the board game, players take turns using the mighty Trogdor to roam the countryside, burninating the lands, cottages, and peasants. When all land tiles, cottages, and peasants have been burninated, Trogdor will be victorious. Players start the game with a Keeper of Trogdor card, which grants you a special ability and a sense of belonging, and one item card that'll give you a special ability that must be recharged after every use. On your turn, you'll start by drawing a card, giving you a two-card hand. Action cards tell you how many action points you can spend, and also a special ability just for this turn. You can spend your action points to move Trogdor to an adjacent land space. And of course, you can chomp a peasant. This will heal Trogdor. Trogdor can also hide in the mountain spaces to protect himself from the knight and archer attacks. And he can use the tunnel systems to travel quickly across the countryside. And of course, Trogdor can burninate. You can burninate the land tile you're standing on. Or you can burninate a cottage if all the surrounding lands have been burninated. And you can burninate a peasant. When this happens, the peasant will run amok, burninating every land tile, cottage, and other peasant he comes in contact with. After your turn is over, you draw a movement card, which will populate the board with peasants, and then you'll move all the peasants. Peasants can potentially repair burninated lands. Then you'll have to move the knights and the archer. The knights will deal damage to Trogdor if they move into his space, while the archers can deal damage with volleys of arrows that fly from afar. If your Trogometer is ever emptied, you'll lose the game. But if you burninate every last land, cottage, and peasant throughout the countryside, you'll go down in history as the greatest keeper of Trogdor that ever walked the land. Now, this is a game that I never thought would be made in a million, million years. I used to watch the old uh, Homestar Runner and Strong Bad comics way back when, uh, but I don't remember anything about them. It's been so long now that I don't remember anything that happened. I, I remember the characters, and that's about it. Uh, so when I'm playing this game, there are a couple of jokes that kind of fly over my head, but I just kind of blow by them because the theme of the game being a dragon destroying everything really kind of trumps that. Uh, so I find it to be a pleasurable, fun experience of a cartoon game in a sense. And I don't have to have that extreme familiarity with the theme to enjoy it. I don't think anybody really would. Um, as far as the components go, they're awesome. I mean, I got this deluxe version that has the miniatures and stuff in it. When I got it at Gen Con, I had no idea that I was getting the deluxe version. I just bought it and it was like, wow, I got the miniatures version. Uh, the other one that would be the standard version comes with wooden meeples that are representations of all of those different things, but it still looks awesome, uh, despite that they're not plastic miniatures. So you're gonna get a great production here with either direction that you go. Artwork is great, the tiles look cool, the cards are fun, even the jokes that I don't get, like they, I just kind of forget about them. So going into gameplay, it's a cooperative game, says it on the box, but it's really a solo game. You could play it with other people and both of you control Trogdor, but really it feels more like just a solo experience that you're sharing with other people. Uh, most cooperative games have a sense of individuality in some capacity. You know, Pandemic, you have your own character that you're moving around, you're working on your own area of the board. This one is unlike that in that you're both controlling the same thing. You're controlling the dragon in the middle of the board and you just take turns controlling him. I have Nemo's War, which it feels the same way. It's a solo game that has cooperative rules. The cooperative rules are you just both control the same thing on your turn. So this is kind of the same thing. The only difference here as a cooperative game is that you get your own player power, you get your own item that you can use. So it's good to have more people because you have more abilities at your disposal. As a solo player, I like to play two and three characters. You know, I just play three keepers with three items, and that gives me that same vibe of the co-op with those special powers, but I'm only playing by myself. But other than that, really, I don't feel like there's a lot of discussion of what to do next because the strategy is kind of low. And that's even with a solo game. Essentially, this is a territory control game, if you think about it. Uh, you're trying to control different territories by burning and destroying them. You controlling them is you burning them. And the opponent, which is the game, is trying to run around and repair those things, and the knights can repair the cottages. 
And all of this stuff is kind of done randomly. When the peasants and the knights move, it's random where they go and what happens. It's random where they're gonna show up and where they're gonna deal damage to you. So there's not a whole lot of defensive strategies that you can employ in this game to say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna watch out for the knights and move over here. The only thing you can really do is go into the mountains and hide where you can't be damaged. Uh, and then you might have some player powers maybe that, that kind of protect you a little bit, but Essentially, it's random whether you're going to get hit, whether you're going to get things repaired or whatever. So you're just trying to constantly deal with the random elements that the game is throwing at you. I guess really the biggest piece of strategy that I can come up with in the game is the really difficult choice of chomping or burning a peasant. If you chomp a peasant, you heal damage. If you burn a peasant, you kill them and they're out of the game. Now, if you burn a peasant, they're going to take out, they're going to burn all kinds of land tiles for you. They're doing like like a third of your job for you by running around and, and, and if they catch another one of the peasants and then they go crazy, that could be like half the board that you just burned doing your job for you. But those peasants go out of the game and peasants are your health because when you chomp them, they go on the board as your health. When they get spawned from those cards at the end of the round, they go on the board from your health. So the more peasants you burn, the less health Trogdor has in the game for himself. So even though they're doing your job for you, you're really just hurting yourself overall in a sense. So there is a choice there. How many peasants am I gonna burn? How many peasants am I gonna eat? You gotta make sure you're eating constantly. So yeah, there is some strategy to the game, but that strategy is very surface level and it's the same in every single game. And I guess that goes into replayability. The game really is the same every time you play. Of course, you have like random board layouts. You have board layouts from the book that you can set up. You got the uh, you got the different keeper powers, different item powers. So there's a little bit of variety in there per game, but really it's the same game every single time. So you're not going to be sitting down and playing this game every night for the next six months because it's the greatest game ever. It's a beer and pretzels game. You're going to sit down with your friends on a Friday evening after you had a few drinks and some dinner and just kind of having a you know, a simple little fun game that you don't have to think too hard about. But all that said, I gotta say, the experience is really fun. It's a fun game to play. The theme is great. It's fun to go around and burn peasants. The most fun is burning the peasants, watching them run across the board, burning everything in their path. That's just super cool to watch it happen. Uh, so I gotta say, the game is fun. Low replayability, maybe. Low strategy, lots of randomness. But I enjoy the experience of it nonetheless. So Trogdor, I like it. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.